Hello and welcome to Geography at Arc St Albans. My name is Mr Bate, I'm Head of Key Stage 3 Geography, so I'll be responsible for the geography that you're going to learn about in Years 7, 8 and 9. So, on this slide you can see a picture of myself, Mr Bate. I teach geography and I've got a love for cities and how they change over time. Human geography is my favourite kind of geography. My, one of my favourite cities is Berlin in Germany. The picture at the bottom is Miss Owen. She's the head of the department. She's the head of geography. She loves to visit new countries and learn about both their human and physical geography. In the picture, she's actually in front of a waterfall that she got to walk behind shortly after the picture was taken in Iceland. So we're just going to have a brief look at what the topics that we're going to study in year seven are. And we're going to talk about our journey through the topic and unit for the rest of your journey here at St Albans. So in year seven, we start with geography and me. And geography and me is a topic where we look at the local geography around our area. We look at what Birmingham is like. How has Birmingham been shaped? Why has it become the way it is because of the geography here? We then take those skills and move into our planet. And we look at the planet as a whole. What things have we seen in Birmingham that we could apply to other places? We then start to think specifically about how the world has been shaped by resources and trade before we move on to a physical geography unit looking at biomes. So different um, locations around the world that have particular animals, wildlife and the different processes that exist there. Before we come back to look at the UK in the final term where we look at the landscapes and the processes that have caused the shape of the land here in the UK and then the UK coastline topic covers everything that um, shapes the actual shape of the UK. What, why is the shape of the UK the way it is? We then move on into year eight to look at things around sustainability and how humans can be sustainable on Earth. So we look at topics like rivers, food, energy, climate change. Before in year nine, we move on to look at how the whole world is connected. And we look at oceans and the economy. At that point, hopefully, many of you will stay on and do GCSE geography. And then even A-level geography. So we take that journey all the way through the whole seven years here at Arc St Albans. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we have some of you that might even take it to the next level and go on to study geography at university. So two really great universities that you could go to to study geography are the University of Birmingham. That's where I got my degree from. And the University of Aberystwyth, Aberystwyth University. That's where Miss Owen got her degrees from. And lots of people just assume that when you've got a geography degree, you're automatically going to go and get a job as a teacher. And that's not the case. There's lots and lots of jobs that you could get if you get a degree in geography. And there's just a few of them listed here. So we've got things like field seismologist that's someone who goes out into the real world and studies the land and the signs around uh, things like earthquakes and volcanoes and studies them we've got people who are urban planners they're people who plan how towns are going to be either redeveloped or in some cases where we're getting towns that are built being built from scratch they design the new town from scratch and have a say in how that uh, town's going to be throughout your journey in geography we do lots of different examples of work so for instance we do some experiments we get to go and measure things and talk about why we are seeing what we're seeing when we do them we get to make some decision making exercises where you'll get a lot of information given to you and you get to make a decision on what you would do if you were in the situation that we're talking about we draw lots of diagrams to explain things and processes that we're talking about as well as doing some creative writing where we take what we've learned and apply it to things like newspaper articles and blog posts to try and keep everything interesting throughout the time here. But the greatest thing about St Albans is our field work opportunities. Because we are located in the half and we've got so many opportunities for field work. And hopefully throughout year seven, eight and nine, we will do some field work with you in key stage three. But as part of GCSE and A-level, you must complete fieldwork. So we get to go and visit a uh, river out in the countryside and we get to climb up the valley and experience all different features and waterfalls and things like that. 
we also go into Birmingham City Centre. We walk from the school into the city centre and we conduct field work studies as we go. And then in A level, we even get to go to the beach and experience lots of rural areas out in Wales. So it's a really great opportunity to go and experience the wider world outside of Highgate. But in preparing for UE7, I've got a task for you. And that task is something called geography outside my window. And geography outside my window is designed to make us realise that geography is happening at all times in every place. You can look out of your window right now and see something that is geographical, something that would relate to the topic in school. So your task is to take a photograph of the world from your window. If you're feeling arty, you can create a field sketch of the view. And a field sketch is just a really simple drawing based on what you've got in that picture. So we've got a guide on the right here that shows us how to draw a field sketch. And some examples of field sketches. They don't have to be great pieces of art. They can be very simple, just showing the key things that you want to talk about. You're going to look at the image, whether that's your photograph or your sketch, and you're going to annotate in it the geography that you can see. And this is the geography that you've studied at primary school. What things have you learned about in primary school that you think might be geography related? And I'm going to ask you to label them on that picture. You're then going to try underneath that label explaining why that is related to geography. And then you're going to use BBC Bite Size to look for other geography content that you could relate to the image. And don't forget, I've listed some of the things that we talk about in year seven, eight and nine that you could also think about those topics and see how do they relate to your picture. But I can tell that there's going to be some people at home that are thinking, well, Mr. Bate, what are you actually on about? Can we see an example? So on the next slide, I've got an example for you. So this image is a photograph out of one of my classrooms that I teach in at school. And in this image, we've got lots and lots of geography going on in the picture. So we're going to start by converting it into a sketch, making it a little bit simpler. It's not as detailed, but we can see the key things. The first thing that I've highlighted in the picture is solar panels. So on top of some of these buildings on the right, we've got solar panels. And these are related to geography because we study energy a lot and we'd study the fact that solar panels are a renewable source of energy. And hopefully in the future, they're going to replace fossil fuels like petrol and gas. And it's really important that we understand them from a geographical point of view. On the left hand side of the picture, we've got the city centre. This is the main area of Birmingham where there are many global businesses. An example of this is HSBC. The bank has its headquarters in Birmingham now, in that city centre, which means that all of the operations for that bank that are all over the globe are all controlled from Birmingham, which makes Birmingham a really important and really international city. In the middle, in the background, we could just make out Selfridges. And at this point in time, Selfridges is surrounded by scaffolding and boards all around the exterior. And that's because something called regeneration and improvements happening to that building. It's over a decade old now, which means that it's starting to look a little bit dirty, a little bit tired. So Birmingham decided as a city, as um, a group of people invested in Birmingham, making Birmingham better, that there should be some sort of project to improve Selfridges. So at the minute, they are improving that and it's being hidden behind this thing so that we can't see the process. We just see the end result when it's finished. Down here on the right, we have an area of Birmingham called Digbeth and the process called gentrification happening. This is a big word and it's something that we talk about a lot in GCSE, but we're going to introduce it to you now. So this area of Birmingham used to be full of lots and lots of factories. And these factories were making lots of different kinds of products. But midway through the 1900s, some of these factories started to close down. They started to move abroad so that they could find cheaper labour elsewhere. It means that those people could make more profit. But that meant that all of the land was just left empty and it started to get cheaper and cheaper to locate there because people just wanted that land being used. So at that point, artists and stuff came into the area, into a place called the Custard Factory and converted the old Custard Factory into creative spaces. 
And as that place got more and more popular, it's become more expensive to use it, which means that those people that moved there because it was cheap and it gave them somewhere to work and somewhere to eventually live are now being pushed out because it's too expensive to live and work there now. And that's the process of gentrification. Down in the foreground, we've got a picture of a tree and we can see a couple more in the background just behind the astroturf. And these trees are known as deciduous trees. And deciduous trees are the trees that are suited to the UK's climate. They lose their leaves in the winter because of how cold it gets. And they've adapted to the different um, kinds of conditions that we get. On the photograph, it was much more clear, but we can see here there's no clouds in the sky, which means that we've got a high pressure weather system. And you'll learn about that at some point during year seven. But that means that we're going to have lots of nice, clear weather. There's no clouds. There's bright sun. The sky is lovely and blue. It's a wonderful day. The astroturf is an example of geography. It's an artificial form of grass. That, and because it's artificial, it doesn't behave the same way as normal grass does, which means that the rainfall can't infiltrate the ground or can't soak into the ground the same way it would soak into normal grass and if we get lots and lots of rain that means that we could possibly get a flood which is a big problem over here on the right just behind the houses we can make out bcu or birmingham city university that's part of the uk's education infrastructure and education infrastructure is something that we talk about a lot in geography but also it's providing young people with skills and quaternary sector jobs, which means they're doing jobs where they're inventing new technologies or researching new things that have been discovered recently, which means it's improving the city, which is all to do with geography. And the last thing that I want to point out is the River Raid that runs from South Birmingham through the heart of Highgate between Arc St Albans and Chandos Primary School. And the reason I want to point this out is because sometimes we get children who come to the school and all the way through year seven, eight and nine don't realise that this is the River Ray. And at some point during GCSE when we're studying rivers, they go, there's no rivers in Birmingham. And then they've been coming to the school for three years without actually realising that that river passes the school ground and they've seen it every day for that time. So what I want you to do is complete this work either by drawing a piece of um, art onto a piece of paper and annotating around that drawing or putting a photograph that you've taken into a Word document and annotating around it. This task should take no longer than an hour and should have some detailed information around it just like mine here. Have a wonderful six week holidays and I look forward to seeing and meeting you in year seven and hopefully getting to teach some of you.